All right, so let's uh, continue on the limits and the property. Um, in this section, we're going to learn how to find limits graphically and numerically. And the objectives will be um, estimate a limit with using a numerical or graphical approach. No different ways that a limit could fail to exist. And study and use a formal definition of limit. So the introduction to limit, limit, limit. Um, limit is a trend. Um, for the graph of function at the particular x equals c. Right? Suppose you are asked to sketch the graph of function f given by f of x equals to x cubed minus 1 over x minus 1. In this case, x cannot be equal to 1. That's part of domain. So the domain is All real numbers except one. And for all values other than x equals to 1, you can use standard curve sketching techniques to graph this. However, at x equals 1, it's not clear what to expect. So let's take a look at that and then try to get something out of it. So to get an idea of the behavior of the graph of f of x near x equals to 1, you can use two sets of x values. One of them is from the left, right? Um, the values on the left could be um, 0 0.99, could be 0 0.99, 0 0.9, 0 0.75. As you can see, the number should be listed in the increasing orders. So 0 0.75 is the smallest numbers among all these numbers selected. 0 0.9, 0 0.99, 0 0.99, and 1. And we try to figure out what happened at the 1. That's a goal. And also, we're going to pick some values on the right hand side of 1, 1.01, 1.01, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.
limit of f of x approaches 3. And that's what we see from the from this numerical numerical table. And this is a very good way of uh, um, investigate limit at any particular x values. And this method has been used a lot. And uh, as you can see, this is a typical. This is a graph of of the function. It actually is a proper sort of a proper, except at x equals one at this point. That's undefined point. So that's why we put a hole there to indicate that that at that particular point, um, the graph is discontinuous. Right. So the graph of f is proper, but uh, that has a gap at a point one three, right? That's showing a finger one point five. Although x cannot equal to one, you can move arbitrarily close to one. As a result, f of x move arbitrarily close to three. So basically, using limit notation, you can write limit when x approaches one for f of x equal to three. This reads as the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 is 3. So this is an interpretation of limit. So now let's talk about the informal definition of the limit. If f of x becomes arbitrarily close to a single number l, as x approaches c from either side, meaning from both sides of the number, both sides, from left hand side and right hand side, right? Left and right. The limit of f of x as x approaches c is l. This limit is written as limit when x approaches c for function f of x equals to l. L is a constant. Okay, so this is the informal definition of a limit, and we're going to see this a lot. So let's take a look at evaluate function f of x when for x over parentheses square root of x plus 1 minus 1 at several points near x equals 0, and then use the result to estimate the limit. If you do this direct substitution, right, meaning if you just plugging x equals 0 into the to this function of 0 so you're gonna have a 0 over radical of 0 plus 1 minus 1 so 0 over 1 minus 1 so this is radical 1 radical 1 equals to 1 1 minus 1 is also 0 so we have a 0 over 0 this is what we call indeterminate form Terminal. Meaning nobody knows what that is. So I'll just give you a intuition what happened here. So we want to figure out we want to investigate the when x approaches zero for this particular function f of x what happened to the limit. Okay. So we create a table just like what we did in the previous example. So pick some value from left hand side of zero. So starting with negative point zero one, and second one is negative point zero zero one. The third one is negative point zero 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 one, and zero. That's what we are looking for answer. And we pick point zero 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 one, point zero zero one, and point zero one. So all these numbers are in the in the increasing orders. As you can see, um, in order to find these values, you just get a for x equals to let's say negative point zero one. You just get a plug into the f of x. f of x is going to be equal to x, which is negative point zero one over square root of negative point zero one plus one minus one. 
and the result of this becomes 1.99499 and that's how you find out the y values that's why we have these y values all these values could be calculated in the same way so now let's take a look at uh, the left hand behavior right well, as you can see the number getting close to 2 and on the right hand side similarly number getting close to getting closer and closer to 2 so we have a we should be confident that at x equals 0 when x approaches 0 from left and right hand side limit when x approaches 0 for f of x in this case our function is x over square root of x plus 1 minus 1 will be 2 right from the table we can come up with this conclusion from result showing table you can estimate that limit to be 2 okay so it's, this limit is reinforced by the graph of f of x so f is undefined at x equals 0 that's why I put a put a circle there right and at this particular point this this number is 2 the left hand side this getting closer and then closer to 2 right on the right hand side uh, the number is getting closer and closer to 2 as well that's why 2 is the limit when limit of f of x x as x approaches 0 <clears throat> and so let's take a look at some cases for for the limits that fail to exist meaning no limit let's take a look at some several examples there are three different cases where limit does not exist so the behavior that differs from the right from the left show that a limit when x approaches 0 does not exist so on the left hand side as you can see when on the left hand side of the 0 now our function f of x is going to be equal to since on the left hand side of 0 so x is negative so get rid of that you get x divided you get negative 1 okay on the right hand side of 0 and then f of x on the right hand side x value is positive so get rid of the absolute value you get x over x is 1 as you can see these two numbers it's not equal to each other so algebraically speaking you know limit does not exist but uh, let's take a look at let's take a look at uh, the detailed solutions of why this limit does not exist okay this is something you know this summary of what we just did so as you can see where x is greater than zero then we have a mini on the right hand side from right hand side This is the left side. When x less than zero, then we get negative one. Here. So these two numbers are not equal to each other. And uh, graphically speaking, when x approaches one, approaches zero from right hand side, you get limit is one. 
this is from left hand side and from the this is from right hand side from left hand side the y value approaches negative one this is negative one right here and these two numbers does not converge meaning they not the same so limit for f of x when x approaches zero does not exist for this particular function so this means that no matter how close x gets to zero there will be both positive and negative x values that yield f of x equals one f of x equals negative one so that means limit does not exist right so basically this is what they call delta it's weak letter delta delta is a positive number and for the x values satisfying the inequality for absolute value of x is greater than zero less than delta you can classify the value of absolute value of x over x as follows negative delta is comma zero so negative x values yields negative one and positive x value yields positive one because up value of x over x approaches a different number from the right hand side of zero then it approaches from the left hand side then the limit when x approaches zero for f of x does not exist does not exist so this is one particular case that limit fails to exist so there are three different three different common type of behaviors associated with non-existence of limit uh, first one is f of x approaches different number just previous example exactly matches with this one from the right hand side of SC then it approaches from the left hand side so meaning left hand left hand behavior is different from right hand behavior second one f of x increases or decreases without boundaries as x approaches C and it becomes becomes infinity right approaches infinity plus minus infinity from left and right and um, f of x oscillates between two fixed values as x approaches c so that's the third case when the limit that failed to exist so let's take a look at the formal definition of limit Let's take another look at the formal definition of limit. Informal definition of limit. If f of x becomes arbitrarily close to a single value L as x approaches c from either side, then the limit of f of x x as x approaches c is L. Right? That's an informal definition. If you look at it, this definition looks fairly technical, even so it is informal because the exact meaning has not yet been given to the two phrases. It's f of x becomes arbitrarily close to L when an x approaches C. So the first person to assign mathematically rigorous meaning to these two phrases was Augustine Louis Cauchy. He's a mathematician. He's epsilon. This letter is epsilon and delta. As we mentioned earlier, definition of limit is the standard use. Is, is the standard used today? 
So let's take a look at this graph. So this is delta. So x equals c, that's what we are looking at. So within a very, very tiny little intervals here, because delta is um, very, very small positive numbers, you can view the sigma as something like infinite many zeros here. All the zeros in between. Okay, that indicates a very very tiny little number. That's what this um, delta is about. And here, as you can see, since the x value is in the interval, the y value is also in the interval, but it's also very tiny little intervals here. Right, so. Then when x approaches c from left hand side and right hand side of x equals c, then f of x becomes arbitrarily close to l, right? Well, means that f of x lies in the interval l minus epsilon, comma l plus epsilon. Again, epsilon is very small. positive number okay. both delta and then epsilon are very small positive number so this is the formal definition of limit and use absolute value you can write as write this as f of x minus l absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon the phrase x approaches c means that there exists a positive number delta such that x lies in either the interval c minus delta comma c or in the interval c comma c plus delta. And the fact that be that could be concisely expressed by the double inequality, meaning the absolute value of x minus c is greater than zero, less than delta. Then f of x minus l is going to be greater than zero, less than epsilon. It goes hand in hand. Meaning x approaches c, you just, this is c, the c minus delta c plus delta that's for the x value for the y value this is l is l minus epsilon and the right hand side is l plus epsilon okay so this is a formal definition of limit and that's just a summary of what we just did, right? First inequality is this. Absolute value of x minus c is greater than zero. Second, second inequality is absolute value of x minus c is less than delta. So x within a distance of delta of c. So let's take a look at the definition, formal definition of the limit. That would be a function defined on an open interval containing C, except possibly at C. That L will be a real number, a statement limit when X approaches C, F of X equals L, meaning that for each epsilon is greater than zero, there exists a delta is greater than zero, such as such that if x minus value of x minus c is greater than zero, less than delta, then f of x absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. So 
so given the limit let's take a look at example find the delta for given epsilon given a limit when limit up, up, when limit limit for x approaches 3 for function 2x minus 5 equals 1 and this is given right find delta such that 2x minus 5 minus 1 Absolute value of that is less than 0 0.01. Whenever x absolute value of x minus 3 is greater than 0, that's the absolute. So here you can easily just expand it 2x minus 5. Minus five minus one, less than point zero one. So here is two x minus six, less than point zero one. If you factor out two, put it in front, you get x minus three, less than point zero one. So now divide both sides of the equation by two. So the average value of x minus three is less than point zero one divided by two. So as you can see, 0 0.005. So this absolute value definitely is greater than zero, less than 0 0.05. And this is actually the delta we're, look, we're looking at, right? So delta equals 0 0.005. So this is our algebraic way of finding the answer. So this is, as you can see, this is typically just becomes f of x minus l, right? Less than 0 0.01. Now we go back to x minus c. This is x minus c. Eventually we end up with that. This is actually x minus c greater than 0, less than epsilon. That's why we're going from this to this. So this is our epsilon, and that's our delta. Okay, this is exactly f of x. This is l, right? As we can see here, limit that's l. Okay, so basically we're going backwards and finding the epsilon and delta. So graphically speaking, as you can see this is the graph for this. So at this particular point when in this case, epsilon is 0 0.01 and the delta is 0 0.005. So for this, this tiny little interval yields that tiny little interval for the for limit. So that's why the Epsilon is 0 0.01 and delta is half of that 0 0.005.